Oh, that's a good question. How, how will a PSM2 class help a scrum master progress on their career? I think the thing we tackle in the PSM2 or the, 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 the advanced PSM is the things we, we try and tackle a lot of the things. All right. How do I explain this? Cruft. I think cruft is a great word for this, right? When you do things for long enough, cruft builds up all the things that are, are holding you back, like the barnacles on a ship, right? They're, they're making it slower, it's less effective, it's it's less sleek. And the PSM2 is about scraping those barnacles off so that you can go go win the race, so that you can be more effective. Because we, we pick up all sorts of weird weird things that we, we... It's the way we work, right? Our ways of working get indoctrinated into the company's way of working, right? And sometimes we're forced at certain points in our career or in doing stuff to make compromises. And those compromises work great in that space, but then they become enshrined in the way we do things. Our cruft, right? We adopt some of that cruft and we need a little bit of a reset to figure out what is and isn't uh, the ship and what is uh, the bit we can get rid of, right? If, back to the barnacle analogy. So um, the, the PSM is about removing the barnacles from the ship. That's really what it's about. It's about identifying those, those things that you find that scrum masters get pushed towards in organizations. Because perhaps when they were starting out as a scrum master, they didn't have the the, the the confidence to say no or the confidence to correct leadership or the confidence to challenge leadership and say, no, we need to do things a little bit different to be more effective. Um, and then that, that, that cruft uh, gets just added to our baggage. So it's really... Uh, um, that that differentiation of again what does a professional scrum master look like here are a bunch of things that we've learned how to do um and then bring it bring it towards uh, um what we do want people to do as a as a as a, as a scrum master and i th i think it also there's lots of people who are scrum masters who um, perhaps been scrum masters for quite some time and have had no formal training, right? They've 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 not um, had any experience whatsoever of uh, um, exposure to to maybe they might not even have ever read the scrum guide, right? That's 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 quite <laughs> I have met those those folks as well, um, and they've been doing it, but they've been doing the role, they've been picking up the accountability, they've been doing uh, uh, the things in the organization. And they don't want to go do a scrum master class because they're like, well, I know how to be a scrum master, right? They don't, but I know how to be a scrum master. And um, perhaps the advanced scrum master is a good way to, to, to level set a lot, a lot of those um, myths. Um, and that's something that we do do at the beginning of the, the, the PSM2, the advanced scrum master classes. Um, we we kind of try and... Uh, kick some of those uh, common myths that you see people fulfilling as a scrum master and reset very quickly like at the start of the class is a quite quick reset to here's what it should look like and then based on it what it should look like what are a whole bunch of I don't know uh, 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 skills uh, workshops, activities that you could run with your teams which is I feel like that's what the, the advanced scrum master really teaches is it's got that short, sharp level set at the beginning, and then it goes into uh, uh, teaching through experience, right? Per through participation, teaching different techniques. So we teach a whole bunch of different liberating structures to help not, you know, make getting a bunch of people together suck less, because it generally sucks in organizations. How to uh, uh, different uh, things to go look at, right? So, so how do you help the team? understand and improve their definition of done well there's little, little workshops and things that people can take away and do that which is why i think at the end of the class there's like is there 30 posters 20 between 20 and 30 posters uh, 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 big infographics that you can 
uh, take away to maybe leverage with teams um, and help help then help you've become a more effective scrum master how do i as a more effective scrum master then help my team be more effective as well so there's kind of two sides to it um there's the 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 cruft that we've built up doing the role even if we were a professional scrum master right we passed our psm psm1 like five years ago or even 10 years ago or uh 13 years ago like i'm myself um, and we've built up some 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 crufts and barnacles that have got stuck to the hull, and we need to knock them off. Or we never had any formal training at all, and we've been doing doing the accountability, trying to do the accountability of the scrum master. And perhaps we've learned from other people's, like we've adopted other people's barnacles onto our way of doing things, and we need that 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 level set. And then what are the tools and techniques we need? Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, follow and subscribe. I always reply to comments and if you want to have a chat about this or anything else, Agile, Scrum or DevOps, then please book a coffee with me through Naked Agility.